what is up welcome back to my channel today is vlogmas day three and i am so excited for today's video if you're new here hi i'm maddie i'm a k-5 stem teacher and ed tech coach in los angeles i post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and during vlogmas i'm posting a new video every single day for 25 days if you've never heard of vlogmas it's basically a time where youtubers post daily vlogs and in my case a new tech tutorial every single day in December for 25 days up until Christmas. Now I know that not everybody watching right now might celebrate Christmas. I thought that this would be a really great way to support teachers and show my appreciation for all of the hard work you guys have done, especially during this school year. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a Google Drawings tutorial. Now this is not your typical Google Drawings tutorial. I'm actually going to be making this holiday themed. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to walk you through how to use all of the basic features of Google Drawings and at the end of this video you'll even leave with an example of something you can try with your students, something you can do yourself. I really like to think of this activity as something that you can use to introduce your students to Google Drawings during the holidays. So without further ado, let's get started. So I went to drawings.google.com and it took me to a blank canvas that looks like this. Now, if you've never used Google Drawings before, it does have some similarities to Google Slides, but I think it just has a really nice clean feature that makes it easier for actually creating drawings as the name suggests. So basically what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm going to walk you through how to use some of the key features of Google Drawings. And in doing so, I'm actually gonna show you how we can use it to build a snowman. Now, I was kind of thinking that this could be a fun activity for you to do with students to sort of allow them to flex their creativity muscle and learn how to use a new tech tool before the holidays. All right. So at the top here, just like how you normally have with the Google tools, you know, we have file, edit, view, insert, format, arrange, tools and help. We're not really going to pay attention to this right now. I'll talk about some of these features toward the end of this video. Really what I want to focus our energy on today is looking at these tools right here. Now, again, what I really like about Google Drawings is it has really awesome features, but it doesn't have a zillion buttons for you to choose from. Personally, when I'm learning how to use a new tech tool, I find tons of different buttons to be really distracting and confusing. So I like that Google Drawings keeps it simple for teachers. So like I said, I want to create a snowman. So to do this, probably one of the first things I'm going to want to do is to create a circle. So you'll notice that right here we have this mouse button. This is the select tool. We have this line tool here. We have this shape tool, text box and image tool. So of course, since we're going to be creating a circle, we're going to want to click on the shape tool here. Now we have a drop down menu. So we have shapes, arrows, callouts, equations. So if I click on shapes or I hover my mouse over shapes here, I can select a circle. Now to actually draw a circle, I'm just going to click and drag. And you'll see that I've created a circle. Now when I click and drag here, my computer makes it so that it turns blue. Yours might be a different color, but you can actually change the color of this circle. So to change the color of a circle, what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to the paint bucket tool and you're going to select a color. So since I'm making a snowman, I'm going to make mine white here. And now you'll see I have a white circle. Now I can also change this border around the circle. So you see right now I have a thin black line. I can actually change what this line looks like. So first, let's say I want to change the color. So right now I have it so that I have a black line here, but let's say I want to change it to this dark blue color. So you can kind of see the colors changed. Now this line is pretty thin, so it's a little bit, a little bit difficult to see. But like I said, you can change the thickness of this line. So to do that, again, I just click on the circle and now I'm going to go to this border weight button. So it's to the right of the border color button. So kind of the way I, I like to think of these is that the paint bucket is the inside, the border color is the outside, and then this border weight is actually the thickness of the outside. So if I click on it, I can choose the thickness of the line. Now this PX stands for pixels. So basically what this means is that the thickness of the line is going to be a certain number of pixels. So let's say I click on four here. Now you'll see that the border is four pixels wide. So this line is a little bit thicker. I think that looks pretty good. 
Uh, so I, I think, I think I, I like that. All right. So now I'm going to show you to the right of the border weight. You can also change what the border actually looks like. So if I click on this, you'll see, I can choose some dots. I can choose a dashed line, some dots and dashes thicker lines, more options here. Um, I do like my line the way it is, but I did want to point out that this is an option for you to choose from. So you can change the way the line actually looks. All right, now that I've created my circle and I feel pretty good about it, I can actually resize it. So to resize it, you'll just click on the shape, then you'll find one of the square corners and you can just click and drag. Now a little fun trick here for you guys is if you actually want to create a perfect circle, see how this is not a perfect circle. If you click shift on your keyboard and you drag, it'll actually make it so that you have a perfect circle. So that's kind of a fun, a fun keyboard trick if you're looking to create a perfect circle. All right, now that I've created my base of my snowman, I'm going to start adding some of the other features. So my snowman, I want to be three circles tall. So you can create a new circle by going up to the shape tool, or you can actually copy and paste this circle. So I'm just doing command C and command V on my clipboard here or on my keyboard here, and I can resize the circle to create my little snowman. All right. And now I'll create the head here. Okay, looks pretty good. My snowman is kind of starting to come together. All right, so next I want to create a nose for my snowman. So I wanna create a carrot nose. So I'm gonna to go to shapes and I am going to find a triangle to create a carrot. So I'm just clicking and dragging, kind of making it how I want it to look. All right, I think that that's going to look pretty good. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change the color again. So I'll go up here to the paint bucket tool. I'm gonna to click on an orange color. I want to make the border of this black. I think I like that and I'll make it a little bit thicker. So you'll see that my, my carrot right now is facing upwards. My triangle is pointing to the sky. You can actually change the rotation of this. So to do that, you'll just click on the shape. Now you'll see this little um, circle here. When I hover my mouse over it, it turns into a little plus sign. That's how I know I can actually rotate this circle. So when I click on it and I drag, you'll see it. Now I can actually create my nose. Alrighty. Next, I want to add some eyes and some buttons for the snowman. So first I'll do the eyes. I'm just going to do small little circles here. Alrighty, so I've created my eyes and I've created my buttons and my snowman here is really starting to come together. I think it's starting to look pretty cute. So I'm going to show you just a few more features here. Um, I'm going to show you guys how you can actually combine some shapes to make another one. So I'm going to make a hat for my snowman. So I'm going to use a rectangle tool to make sort of the base of my hat. And now here's the trick. I'm going to actually create a, another rectangle to create the top of the hat. So I'm just clicking and dragging and putting these shapes together, sort of. I'll make my hat um, maybe this dark, um, dark gray color. I'll change the border thickness again. OK, so I've created my hat. Now, the problem with this hat is that the pieces are actually not connected. So if I want to actually create them as one shape altogether, what I can do is I can just highlight both of these shapes here. I'm using Mac, so I'm going to click Control and then click. But if you use a PC, you can right click. And now I'm actually going to group these shapes together. So I'm going to go down here to where it says group. I'll click group and now you'll see that my hat actually is all together in one piece. So if I want to si resize it, the uh, dimensions will actually still, it'll still sort of be the same ratio. All right, so I've created my hat and now my snowman is done. I think it looks super cute. 
So just a couple more features I'm going to share here. You can create a text box if you would like to add some text. So for example, if you wanted to, uh, you know, tell students to create a writing prompt about their snowman, they could do that by just clicking and dragging. So you could say something like, you know, my snowman is dot dot dot, and students could actually write a story about their snowman if they would like. Now you can also actually type within shapes. So that's one thing that I did not show you how to do because it didn't really make sense for this snowman, but I am going to show you how to do this now. So if I click on the shape tool, let's say I want to have this little heart here and I want to be able to type inside it. To do that, I can just double click on the heart and I can type in, you know, my snowman. And you'll see that I've actually created text within my shape, which is pretty cool. Now, just like how you normally adjust text, you can do that using these features at the top here. So you might have noticed I instinctively just middle aligned this text here to make it look nice. I did that just like how you normally middle align text when you're using Google Docs or Google Slides. Now I can also change the font so I can make this, you know, a super cute font. I can change the size. I can change the color. I can make it bold, italics, underlined. All right, so now that I've finished making my snowman, I wanna show you guys how you can actually save this as an image file. So first I'm gonna give my, um, my snowman here a title. So I could type in snowman. And now I wanna save this as an image to my computer. So to save this, I can click on file and now I'll click on download. So the download button basically means it's gonna take this from Google Drive, take this from the internet and actually export it to my physical computer. And so if I wanna create a PDF document, of course I would do that by clicking on this PDF button here. Or if I wanted to create an image, I could choose one of these options. Now, I wanna point out for you guys the difference between a JPEG and a PNG, because I do know that that's something that can be a little bit tricky. So this button here, JPEG, basically means that if I save this file, this entire rectangle is going to save as an image to my computer. So, you know, where you see the little, the checkered background, that is actually going to save like a white piece of paper. Now, if I just wanna save my snowman and have it have a transparent background, just like, you know, normal clip art does, I would wanna select this option that says PNG. So a PNG means it has a transparent background, so it only saves the things that you create. Now, if I wanted to do a PNG of just my snowman, I would wanna delete this text and this heart here, but basically if I click this button, I will now have my own clip art that I've created of a snowman. So those are some options on how you would actually want to download this file to your computer. Now, just like a normal Google file, you can share it with other users by clicking this share button. So let's say, you know, I made a card that I wanted to share with my class. I could do that by clicking this share button here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how to use Google Drawings. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye friends.